This video contains installation instructions for the Skyline pour-in-place horizontal lifeline system from Reliance Fall Protection. This video is designed to complement the written instructions that accompany this system. A copy of those instructions must be kept on file and available for reference at all times. Users must read and fully understand the written instructions or have them explained in detail before using the system and related equipment. Failure to observe either written instructions or those provided in this video could result in serious injury or death. Prior to use, all workers must be trained in the proper use of all systems and equipment. A training and instruction review should be repeated at regular intervals. A rescue plan must be prepared, workers trained in its use, and rescue equipment must be on hand prior to any use of this horizontal lifeline system. Any questions should be directed to Reliance by calling toll-free 1-888-362-2826. Important OSHA regulations covering the use of horizontal lifeline systems can be referenced in the written version of these instructions. The Skyline Pour-in-Place Horizontal Lifeline Components List The 6310 Skyline Portable Lifeline Kit consisting of 1 each 6000 Skyline Shock Absorber one each 6050 inline cable clamp. Four each 6062 one half inch stainless steel bow shackles. One each 6090 three inch ratchet assembly. And one each 6092 10 foot ratchet strap. Additional components include the following. Two each 6100 series end stanchions. 2 each 6181 pour in place inserts. 4 each 6062 1 half inch stainless bow shackles. 2 each 6066 5 8 inch stainless bow shackles. 2 each 6122 2 inch ratchet tie back assembly. 2 each 6127 2 inch by 15 foot ratchet tieback straps and a length of 6070 or 6072 3 8 inch 7 by 19 wire rope. A completed pour in place system is shown here. You will need the following tools to perform the installation. Box end and combination wrenches. A 3 quarter inch box end wrench. Ratchets and sockets in a 3 8 or 1 half inch drive size. A 3 quarter inch socket. A 5 8 inch socket. Miscellaneous tools also necessary include a torque ratchet or wrench, a permanent marker, and a tape measure. Approved fall protection must be worn during lifeline installation. Do not use the lifeline or its anchorages for personal fall protection until the system has been completely installed, inspected, and approved for use by a qualified person. Installation instructions for the Skyline pour-in-place horizontal lifeline system. Please note, the 6181 pour-in-place inserts must be precast into the concrete at the time the beam is manufactured. The stanchions chosen for use with this system must extend no less than 5 feet from the top of the walking working surface. Identify the location of the first end stanchion. Rebar loops must be grade 40 or grade 60, size 4 or larger. 
There should be at least two loops on the side opposite the direction the lifeline will run. Clear the hole containing the 6181 pour-in-place base of any debris and insert the stanchion into the hole. Make certain that the holes in the stanchion head are parallel to the direction of the lifeline. Tieback Strap Installation Attach a 5 8 inch bow shackle to the lowest hole of the stanchion head on the opposite side of where the lifeline cable will attach. Secure the shackle using the nut and lock ring. Attach a 1 half inch bow shackle to the triangle ring of the 2 inch by 15 foot tie back ratchet strap. The tie back strap should be bolted to a rebar loop that is the same distance from the stanchion base as the stanchion's height. It must be attached on the side opposite that to which the horizontal lifeline will be attached. Secure the shackle using the nut and lock ring. Attach a 1 half inch bow shackle to the triangle ring of the ratchet tensioner and the rebar loop used for tieback. Utilize the loop adjacent to the loop used to secure the ratchet strap. Please note, the tensioner and strap must not be attached to the same loop. Each must be attached to their own loop. Secure the shackle using the nut and lock ring. Pass the 2 inch ratchet strap through the 5 8 inch bow shackle on the stanchion head. Feed the excess strap through the opening until the slack has been removed. Thread the ratchet strap into the mandrel of the ratchet tensioner. Feed the excess strap through the mandrel until the strap is taut. Ratchet the strap until tight. Verify that the webbing makes at least one full revolution on the mandrel. If it does not, release the load, pull a few inches of strap out, and retighten. Wrap any excess strap around the ratchet tensioner and secure. The ratchet tensioner of the tieback assembly must be placed so that the angle formed by the walking, working surface and the tieback is 45 degrees or less when measured from the vertical. The ratchet tensioner must be attached to a rebar loop that is located the same distance away from the stanchion base as the height of the stanchion. Please see the written instruction manual for more information about tieback strap positioning. Please note, some horizontal lifeline system designs will require the installation of intermediate stanchions to reduce the minimum required clearance or line tension in the lifeline cable. These intermediate stanchions are installed using the same procedure as end stanchions, but they do not require tieback straps. If you have questions or are uncertain about the proper design of a specific lifeline, please contact Reliance for more information. Installation for the first stanchion is complete. Repeat these steps for installation of the opposite end stanchion before proceeding. Lifeline Cable Installation Lay out the horizontal lifeline cable on a flat surface directly below the I-beam where the stanchions will be installed and remove all bends. 
Carefully inspect the cable for crushed spots, broken wires, weld strikes, or any other deformity that may affect the integrity of the cable. Damaged cables must be removed from service immediately. Position the eye end of the wire rope so that it is about five to seven feet away from the location of one of the end stanchions. Longer spans can require up to seven feet of cable. Shorter spans are generally due to cable stretch under pretension. Proceed to the opposite end of the cable. Locate the spot on the wire rope where it would contact the anchor lug of the stanchion. A plumb line or laser level may be used to help identify this spot on the cable if the cable has been laid out some distance below where the stanchions were installed. Mark the spot on the cable with a permanent marker. Next, remove the six bolts and lock washers from the top plate of the inline cable clamp. After removal of the bolts, set the bolts and the top plate aside. Using the mark on the cable as a guide, place the wire rope into the grooved lower plate of the inline cable clamp. Twist the wire rope and press down into the grooves of the clamp. It may have to be twisted and untwisted to align properly. Place the top plate onto the lower plate and begin tightening the bolts. Tighten the top plate evenly to 35 foot-pounds. To ensure even tightening of the bolts, follow the tightening pattern shown here. Attach the one half inch bow shackle that is secured to the inline cable clamp to the top hole of the end stanchion using the shackle bolt. Replace the nut and cotter lock ring. Attach a one half inch bow shackle to the end of the Skyline shock absorber. Remove the bolt from the bow shackle attached to the shock absorber. Attach the bow shackle shock absorber assembly to the triangular D-ring of the ratchet strap. Replace the nut and cotter lock ring. Remove the bolt from a one half inch bow shackle and insert it into the eye of the Skyline shock absorber. Attach the bow shackle to the top hole of the second end stanchion. Secure the bolt with the nut and replace the cotter lock ring. Next, install a one half inch bow shackle onto the triangle D-ring of the three inch ratchet assembly. Connect the shackle assembly and ratchet to the thimble eye on the wire rope. Secure the bolt with the nut and replace the cotter lock ring. Before ratcheting the tensioner, attach a positioning lanyard to the side D-rings of your full body harness. Secure around an end stanchion to provide leverage while leaning. Begin lifting the horizontal lifeline cable assembly to its intended position. Pass the free end of the ratchet strap into the ratchet slot and pull to remove the slack. While holding the ratchet strap tight, begin tensioning the lifeline using the ratchet handle. If bypass stanchions are being used, the cable must be placed through the fittings before tensioning. Tighten the ratchet load binder until tension releases the load indicator washer in the shock absorber.
A freely spinning washer indicates the required pretension of 1,000 foot-pounds has been reached. While ratcheting the load binder, be certain that the webbing makes one complete revolution on the mandrel before correct line tension is reached. The mandrel is indicated here. If the webbing has not made one full revolution on the mandrel, release the tension, let one to two inches of strap out of the load binder, and retighten. System Inspection Inspect the installation for any defects. This includes missing parts, damage, proper anchor strength, configuration, pre-tensioning, alignment, elevation, and defective components. Do not authorize system use if any defects or discrepancies are found. Check the system installation parameters against installation documentation. Once again, do not authorize the system for use if any defects or discrepancies are found. Once the system passes all checks by a competent person, it may be approved for use and should be labeled with a permanent ID tag. Once the tag is complete, attach it to the system so that it is prominently displayed. A separate tag should also be added indicating the date of last inspection by the competent person. Reliance recommends daily inspection, especially on a multi-contractor job site. Installation is now complete. Daily system checks. Please note, before releasing lifeline tension while performing system checks, be sure that your personal fall arrest system is anchored to the stanchion and not to the lifeline. Daily checks should be performed to ensure correct line tension. To perform the tension check, hold the free end of the strap firmly before releasing the load binder to ensure that the strap does not freewheel through the ratchet assembly. After releasing the tensioner, check the washer in the shock absorber assembly. It should not spin. Retension the line with the load binder until the washer spins freely. During daily system checks, check the length of strap between the sewn back portion of the strap and the ratchet. As demonstrated here, the distance should be as short as possible. This video demonstrates the installation of a typical Skyline horizontal lifeline system for use on a concrete beam structure and outlines the general procedures used to properly erect a lifeline. 
Specific worksite geometry may require that different components be used to maintain the required 2 to 1 safety factor of strength and the necessary minimum required clearance below the walking, working surface. In all cases, the Reliance Horizontal Lifeline Wizard program must be used to determine these clearance factors and to ensure that proper line tensions are used when calculating safety factors. Please note, not all Skyline Horizontal Lifeline systems will use the same equipment shown in this video. Reliance manufactures a wide variety of anchorages to accommodate virtually any workplace geometry. If you have questions about the configuration or installation of your system, please contact Reliance. For more information about Skyline, Horizontal Lifeline Systems, and other fall protection products, contact Reliance at 888-362-2826 or visit us on the web at www.relsafe.com.